And it is rocking. It's rocking. You're listening to the I-35 Realty Show, your show for the Central Texas area about real estate. And I'm your host, uh, Bill Vernon, your Keller Williams agent for the Central Texas area. So pumped about being a KW agent. And we got uh, Adam, uh, Adam, I'm sorry about that guy, Aaron Savage. Um, too many A's are in my life. My youth minister's a, an A name, and we got Aaron involved in my life, and I got all these A names. Uh, we're going to have to have everybody change their name. But anyways, uh, you can get a hold of me, your agent, uh, for the Central Texas area at 888-559-5217. You can reach out to us at radio at i35realty.com. If you've got any questions, uh, you can reach out and give those to us. We'll, of course, if with your permission, share uh, any of the uh, questions you might have, and we'll answer them. Now, we'll answer you quicker than we will um, the uh, on our Saturday program, but we'll share it with the, the little listeners, because if you have that question, I know other people do, too. Um, we can also search us out at uh, youtube.com slash i35 realty run it all together you can see all the fabulous properties we have you can, you can meet me and jeff uh, our uh, other agent we have on the i35 realty team and you can check us out at uh, facebook.com slash i35 realty as well and we loved to talk real estate so let's get get going on it uh, i had a closing uh, yesterday uh, it 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 was a great uh, week for me, and, you know, the it's out there. It's really hot right now, and you know what? It's really hot in my business as well, and a lot of things are happening. We had a closing uh, yesterday, and I was sitting at it, and the gentleman um, was signing the, uh, literally, uh, the phone book that you now sign, and it's crazy papers. Uh, just <laughs> some of them are so funny, but uh, it, it is what it is. You got to sign it all. It's going to get worse, by the way, um, and we'll probably bring you know kind of talk about that on some future uh, shows because uh, title and lending are about to, uh, and therefore uh, us real estate agents are about to uh, see our lives change drastically. Um, and, and and so, anyways, it's, it's fun, but. He was looking at one of the one of the pages on the interest rate, and in there, of course, it expresses the uh, the the interest rate. It's a truth and lending document, and at in, in at one point in there, he looks down and sees how much he's paying uh, total for the home he's buying. And I'm not going to get, give you a, a whole lot uh, information about his transaction, but it it, it kind of made a, a resonant to me uh you know a lot of times we get involved and in, we buy something on credit like a vehicle not, not such a sharp move and we don't realize how much we think oh we bought a uh, fifty thousand dollar car and we're paying you know whatever crazy uh payments we're making for the next uh, 25 years on that car and all of a sudden that fifty thousand dollar car is not that well that that's what he was looking at he he had uh, you know the price that he bought it at, and then he realized what he actually was going to really buy it at um, if he went the full term of his loan, and it kind of sparked something because something that's concerning me, and what I would put out to both you as a buyer maybe or as a seller that uh, you need to really pay attention to interest rates, and it made me go sit down and put this together for you real quick. I took about, uh, I went to uh, a um, loan calculator to figure this up. I've chose a $140,000 house. And the reason I did that is, depending on which of the three MLSs I am in, uh, that would be about the average. A couple of the MLSs are a little higher than the other. But uh, it, it gives us kind of a rough idea, a starting point. And so we went on a 30-year term. And we uh, went on an interest rate. Now, I picked 4.5. Now, the current interest rate, if your credit is just overwhelmingly sharp, is about 4.28. Uh, but maybe you don't have a lot of credit history, uh, so we're going to go at 4.5. And so we, th those are our parameters. 
So we put that in. Our payments could be uh, seven oh nine thirty six. Now anybody out there right now that's buying uh, is got rent above that amount, you need to be calling me at eight 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 five five nine five two one seven, and let's get together and figure out how you quit paying the man who, by the way, slashes could potentially be a woman or a corporation. Um, you're not paying them. Uh, to buy their place. I mean, you are buying a house after all. The question is, are you buying your house or are you buying someone else's property? And I want to get you into buying yours. So let's go on with the, uh, stop the uh, little mini commercial in the middle of our conversation there to go to this. If you make the total payments on that, at that interest rate, you're doing uh, $255,369.40 for a total interest of 115 uh, 369.40. That is what you're paying for your house. Um, and so the next thing I want to put out in front of you is this. What if interest rates went up? And I'm, not, I'm just talking smidgens. Um, luckily right now, because of all the craziness going on in Europe, uh, we've been lucky that we didn't have uh, it taken off. But if you're listening and watching, interest rates... Uh, are potentially going to uh, go up. I have no doubt about it. Um, I think uh, it, it, when uh, things settle down in Europe um, or if it just becomes status quo, people are, are going to start selling down and those interest rates are going to start going up. So we go to the to this. The amount is still 140, 30 years, but we're at 4.75. So now we're at paying 730.31. And our total would be $262,910.26, with a total of one hundred twenty-two nine hundred and ten twenty-six on the interest. Now, that's an increase of $7,540.86 if you wait around and wait for the interest rates to go up to that point. Now, I don't know about you. I probably... Probably a lot of you might go, well, that's not a lot of money. Well, I'll tell you what, Aaron and uh, Bill, just make a check out to us and send us that very small amount. We'd be more than happy um, to take that money off of you if it's not worth fighting for. Um, I think it is. And I, if I was out there buying, um, I definitely would be paying attention to how much I'm paying uh, over the life of owning that property. But let's say this, let's go up to uh, the same loan amount, 30 years, but now we're at 5%. And now we're paying 751.55. Still, you know, the payment sounds pretty good, especially if you're paying $800 or $1,000 on a rental. It definitely sounds good uh, because that, that's going in your pocket. Now your uh, total payments will be uh, $270,558.10. For a total interest payment of one hundred and thirty five fifty eight ten, so now we're at fifteen thousand one hundred and eighty eight seventy in the difference in the interest rates now, and if they went to five percent, again, you might go, well, that's not a whole lot of money. Well, Aaron and I would, we'll we'll cash your check, just send it to us. Uh, the the moral of this story is, is, is interest rates go up even small increments. It's going to ding you. It's going to hurt you. And so if you're in the market to buy right now or thinking about it, uh, your decision process needs to be uh, going to let's get it done. Because we are, uh, typically should be at a, probably about uh, an average is about 6%. And we're down here in the fours. Uh, and so it, it's great down here. But if it goes up, I want, I want you to think about that how much it's going to cost you in the long run. And it also, why this impacts you as a seller is why interest rates are not good going up is that it's going to ding you and how many people are going to be able to afford to buy your house, which leads us to, uh, you know, another discussion that I want us to get into and that's mortgage, uh, refinance, uh, and what's going on in, uh, mortgage rates just in general. Uh, uh, Donna, Diana Olick did a great article here. Uh, mortgage refinancers act on lower rates. Home buyers don't. Yeah, that, that's your kind of hey, hello. What did what she just say? 
In other words, people are refinancing, but home buyers are not really acting on this uh, great news of being on the lower um, interest rates. And here we go. More trouble in the uh, Ukraine led to more applications of U.S. mortgage uh, refinance last week, and it's all about interest rates. As investors pour into the bond market and interest rates fall, mortgage rates follow suit. Total mortgage application volume increased 1.4% on week last week, according to data of the Mortgage Bankers Association, better known as the MBA. Refinance applications were um, behind the surge, rising 3% on the week on seasonal adjusted basis. They are still off uh, 3.1% from a year ago, despite the fact that the rates are lower today than they were a year ago. We can continue on with this quotation. Conventional refinance applications increased last week as mortgage rates dropped to their lowest level in over a month. However, the refinance index remains within a narrow range we have been in for over the past year, as m- most borrowers have little incentive to refinance at this level of rates. This is Michael uh, Frattinatoni, chief economist for the NBA. We go on with this, and this is, uh, while all cash buyers are still an inordinate large portion of the market, the share is slowly waning, and there's a lot of other uh, evidence of that happening. In other words, all cash sales accounting for 37.9% of all sales of single-family homes and condos nationwide in the second quarter, down from the three-year high of 42.0% of the previous quarter, but still up from the 3.7% a year ago, according to uh, Realty Track, the real estate sales and uh, analytics company. Quoting here again um, is uh, a Realty Track's uh, Darren Bloomquist. This is a classic good news, bad news scenario for the housing market. The good news, news is, is fewer cash buyers should help loosen the inventory of homes for sale and reduce competitive bid, bidding, giving first-time home buyers and other non-cash buyers more opportunities. The bad news is that some of those first-time home buyers and other non-cash buyers may already be priced out of the market thanks to the rapid run-up in home prices over the past two years in many areas. And we continue on with Mrs. Olek's reporting. Sales of existing homes have risen slightly over the past few months. Already, sales of the newly built homes, which come at a premium to existing homes, saw a steep decline in June. July numbers of existing home sales will be released later on by the National Association of Realtors. And we're going to to kind of talk about those statistics here in a sec. But what we got going on here, I think, in that article is, is, is this. Cash buyers are starting to wane. And now we're going to have to start relying on first-time home buyers. And we've already talked in previous shows that they're not showing up. Uh, so then that uh, means that your pool is starting to shrink. So if you're thinking about selling, I still think it's a good time. I just think you, you don't want to wait um, around and not have your, your house on the market. Um, I want to kind of clear up something, that, um, and that's actually the supply uh, right now our markets and i'm talking about the temple belton the colleen uh, greater fort hood in the waco area our market is great it's good but however we're not in a situation where they're seller markets now if we go down to austin we drive uh, what is that about 70 miles down the road um, it's a different story if we go to houston it's a different story in fact if we go, if you compare the Austin to maybe like say the San Angelo market, um, in San Angelo there is no, there you can't find a house. Um, you still can buy a house in Austin. You still can find some of those, but when you get into our markets, the supply is just right. We have enough buyers, and I'm actually seeing a, a traffic on my website increase um, from June and July. Um, we saw kind of a decrease, but actually this August, been, excuse me, they're watching the uh, my internet activity, and there was a tick up in the last couple of weeks. In fact, before I came in here, I had someone going, "I'm getting out of my apartment. Let's get ready to start looking for a house." I'm like, "Let's let's kill her. Let's let's start doing that." And uh, we want to take a break right now. I want to kind of look at some of the houses that we do have for sale, and um, we. 
I was at uh, dinner yesterday with my wife, and we were talking about uh, the house that I sold there. There was some drama. It took me a while to sell that house. Well, n- drama in that uh, it, it just had some issues. We did get it sold, and I, I was sitting there talking to her, and I, I, I kind of told her, you know what, Becky, um, I have not had a house expire on me this year, meaning that I, I've sold all my inventory. Now, she, she did correct me. She goes, you, you had to uh, want to withdraw from me, and I said, yeah, I did. However, um, after about two months, they came back to me and, and decided to let me relist the house, so we got that one going. I want to look at 3106 Las Cruces and Temple. It's a four-bedroom, two-and-a-half bath. It's uh, 2650 in square footage. I love this house because of the, the oak trees in it. It's When you walk in, it has a lot of a curb appeal. And then you get into the house, and it is very clean. It's move-in, ready, let's go. has tons of living space. So if you're looking in one of the bedrooms, the one of the four bedrooms on the other side of the house, so if mom wants to come live with you, or maybe you just like a, a long-term guest to come hang out with you, you got plenty of space in this house. Love this house. And we got it priced to sell at one seventy nine nine. You need to give me a call. And then we got this great house. Again, It's it's got a lot of activity. I don't think it's going to stay on the market that long. It's an Axtell. And if you're looking for a house to retire to, there's three bedroom, two and a half bath. It's 1749 on the square footage. It's on 16.82 acres. has barns, a shop that has water and electricity to it. Two bar, uh, ponds that have bass with your name on it. So let's go fishing right now for two ninety nine nine, And that's on Highway 84. Then, let's see here. I'm looking at an old list. I'm going, oh, we can't talk about those because we sold those. Here's a, a great uh, house for maybe that young couple. Or maybe maybe you're single and you're just looking for a place to live, but you don't really want a ton of neighbors. It's out on um, FM 2601. It's 9078 uh, FM 2601. It's 1,200 square feet, uh, double-wide uh, mobile home. It's a 3-2 has this extra room that they keep calling the utility room, but I'm looking at is could be a, a little bit of um, space for you to have an office or maybe uh, the kids can play. And it's on a half acre cross fence, so you can have a couple of goats you want to. has a chicken coop, so you could have chickens right off the bat. And it is priced to sell at 65000 tell you right now, that's a great buy. This one right here, we actually are working on an offer on it, and it's in Cove. It's Cedar Drive. Uh, 613. It's up on one of those mesas. Um, they haven't accepted the contract, so you still can maybe get in on this one. It's three bedroom, two and a half bath, 2108 on the square footage, 128.5. Great house. Clean. Unbelievably clean house. Um, if I was wanting to move into Cove, this is the house I'd want to get into. You know, that it precipitates a little uh, conversation. Heard this the other day. Uh, I went on a listen point. In fact, we're going to finish it up. And you're going to hear about this in, in the following weeks over on Pea Ridge. Great property for investment. We're going to have that one coming up uh, next weekend. And, well, we won't actually be talking about it next weekend, but it'll be ready for you next weekend. Um, but that house, uh, when I was sitting talking to her, she goes, well, uh, what is what is your experience in West, uh, West Temple? And I go, well, you know, I've sold three houses over here, um, bringing buyers. And um, I sold one. Uh, in fact, it was across the Adams from you. Um, I think a lot of people think you have to be from Temple. Well, Again, I I don't think the neighbors. Uh, I don't think Aaron wants me to be his neighbor with my uh, cattle herd and my goats and my chickens. I don't know why he would. He uh, I don't. I have and we were up at seven o'clock warming goats. I don't think he's going to hear all that noise going on in his in his backyard. So Bill doesn't live in Temple. I don't live in Cove. I don't live in Colleen. However, I grew up in this area. I know your area. In this. Um, is a good example. Love this house, Bel Air Drive in Colleen, 711 Bel Air Drive. It's a four bedroom, two, and a, uh, two bath, 1308 on the square footage. They got it priced right now. They dropped it to 75000 I'm telling you, if you're looking for a rental uh, property, this is it. You need to be giving me a call at 888 559 5217. Or, uh, you know, visit our website. You can actually look at all these properties. I'd love to talk to you about um, getting in those. 
Why is it, why would you want to pick me as your real estate agent? I want to put this out in a kind of a story form and, and, and let you kind of think about there. Um, if you go out and bought you a watch at the, at the jewelry store, I'm not going to advertise any jewelry stores. Um, and you went and bought it and you, uh, you, you paid a, a fair price. You expect to pay a fair price because it was there at the, maybe at the mall. And, um, because there was a sell person involved and there's all the, the cool stuff going on involved in that. And it, Anytime uh, people are, are dealing with salespeople, that's, that's kind of how they think. Now, let's, let's say you bought that watch, and it's a, a good-looking watch. You never put it on. It's still in the original packaging, still original uh, bag. You have the receipt to show how much you paid for it, and you put it up for sale in your garage sale. What do you expect someone to offer you for that? You think you're going to get the same price the jewelry store gets? No. And why is that? Because there's nobody uh, salesperson involved. There's a natural inclination when you're dealing with a realtor that you're going to expect to pay uh, a higher price. So if you're a seller, why would you not want to use a uh, a realtor? And we'll talk more about this, but um, I'm not going to continue beating you to death with statistics because we're, we're starting to wind down here. We've got a few minutes still, but we're winding down. Um, a realtor will get you about 9 to 12% more than if you sell it yourself. And so there you go. My con- my commission is taken out, and you still are going to walk away f- with a higher percentage than if you sell it yourself. And those are National Association of uh, Realtor Statistics. Those are not, not something I you know, came up with. You know, we want to look at existing um, home sales um, real quick. And mainly what I want to do is look at uh, – what's going on in Texas. Sales of existing homes in Texas in July were at the same relative pace as last year, according to the data of, uh, released Thursday by the Real Estate uh, Center of Texas A&M, a.k.a. Uh, Recon, is what we like to call it in the in realty world. Data from participating multiple listing services, also known as MLSs, reported that the center show uh, 29,456 homes were sold statewide during the month. That's a 2% more than the same month last year. The uh, 165,992 existing home sales to date uh, in 2014, and that's 1% more than the same period in 2013. So uh, J- July 2014 housing activity data, um, well, let's, let's kind of just skip that. I just want to kind of go back up there. So we're on pace basically just to meet uh, what we did last year. And so what I want to point out to you is I think all the markets are leveling off. In fact, we're hearing echoes in nationally that, uh, that San Diego, Florida, Phoenix, places like that are, are starting to level off. And, and so when uh, we're looking at this stuff, we need to really make sure that uh, we're looking at statistics for your area. Again, that's why you want a realtor like me involved in your cell, because I'm going to tell you how much things have sold in your subdivision, how long they've stayed on the market, so that you can make wise decisions. Uh, and you can call me in. Maybe you're just thinking about selling, and that's okay. You can... People uh, I've dealt with uh, many times have just started thinking about it. So why don't you give me a call at 888-559-5217, and we'll get started on working on either selling your home or buying your home. So if you know anybody that needs to buy, sell, or invest in real estate, give them my number. Or if you need to buy, sell, or invest in real estate, please give them you me a call at 888-559-5217. I really look forward to talking to you uh, next uh, weekend. we got a special guest uh, next weekend. Um, I'm going to let you uh, wait with anticipation, and I look forward to hanging out with you next Saturday and uh, all these Saturdays. I, l- I love hanging out with you and talking real estate. And, of course, you can reach out to us at radio at i35realty.com or 888 888- Five five nine fifty two seventeen, and we'll be talking to you next uh, Saturday. Bye now.